Michael, the first video. Thanks, Jacques. So, <clears throat> um, Jacques, this is an 85-year-old uh, medical professional, actually a doctor, who was referred with uh, high-grade dysplasia, biopsy-proven high-grade dysplasia, within a short segment of Barrett's. And this is his index endoscopy. Um, can you tell me your, your impression about this, this lesion here? Uh, first of all, it's not a very uh, prominent Barrett segment. It's uh, relatively short, and if we're looking here from the esophageal side, there's only a tongue-like extension on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and you're spraying some fluid on it, likely to be acetic acid, if I see it like this, because there's some widening of a small island or tongue-like extension at the 3 o'clock. Um, from what I've seen thus far, it doesn't really strike out as being that abnormal. Uh, was, was it a targeted biopsy or was it just a random biopsy that showed this to be high grade? I think, I, I think it was just a random biopsy, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we were to grade this uh, or classify this segment by Prague, we'd say it's probably a C0 M1 or 0.5 even. It's certainly not um, uh, impressive, but the biopsies did show high grade dysplasia and they were reviewed at our department and when we agreed that this patient required um, endoscopic assessment, mm -hmm. probably definitive staging by EMR and, and perhaps uh, complete therapy as well. You know, I, I, I agree because mm -hmm. it's, um, you can look at this for ages, uh, but if the, if the histological diagnosis has been confirmed by a pathologist who's experienced in diagnosing high-grade dysplasia and the endoscopic appearance of the lesion does not really suggest that it's deep submucosal invading, then there's little else you can do that will provide you with more useful information on doing an endoscopic resection. Yeah. Uh, so endoscopic ultrasound for a lesion like this uh, will probably not be very helpful. We know that the um, accuracy of EOS on top of a good quality endoscopy is almost absent. Um, I think you've recently published that, haven't you? There's, yeah. there's like three or four groups that now have actually shown that the additional value of EOS on top of a good quality endoscopy is very limited. Uh, and knowing that, that EMR is so safe uh, and that EMR will give you the unequivocal diagnosis yeah. if it comes to if this is mucosal or submucosal, but also the unequivocal diagnosis if this is high grade or cancer, yeah. or if this is a poorly differentiated cancer versus a well differentiated cancer, or if there's lymphatic ingrowth or not. Yeah. All these factors are crucial in making the decision if this patient can be further managed endoscopically. Yeah. And so that's the diagnostic and staging purpose of EMR that is very relevant in a case like this. I think uh, also we've shown with EMR that at least in 25% of the cases there'll be an upstaging and perhaps in another 25% there'll be a downstaging. So that sure. really biopsy alone uh, will be inaccurate, will not give you the definitive histology and perhaps around 40 to 50 percent of cases. So Absolutely true. The diagnostic value of EMR is clearly superior to that of histology, not only because it gets you a better piece of tissue, but also because the orientation of the tissue is so much better and you get deeper layers. So the orientation of the superficial mucosal layers relative to the deeper crypts are always guaranteed uh, compared to biopsies. So it has an additional value in terms of diagnostic from a histological perspective, and it has the best way to stage the lesion if you're considering if it's a mucosal or submucosal cancer. Agree. Jacques, what, what do you think of this lesion now that we, we have a better look, now that we've got the cap on, and perhaps, you know, what's the advantage of using the cap to assess the lesion? I think that's a good, good remark, Michael. Sometimes if these lesions are really so close to the cardia and they, you can't see them en in the anterograde position and in the retroflex position they are too far away also because the hiatal hernia in this yeah. case is quite small. Yeah. Just attaching a small cap may be enable you to push the lesion slightly away and get a little bit more on fast view in this still image yeah. in which we're looking through the duet cap. You can see the uh, white wires, releasing wires for the rubber bands and the black rubber bands on the outside of the cap. And even now you can recognize that there is indeed a, it looks like there's a mass effect, at least that the mucosa is slightly elevated and thickened at that level. Yeah. Do you agree? And the, yeah, I agree. And the appearance is quite different to what we have with the just conventional forward viewing endoscope. And if we were just going to assess <coughs> the lesion, then perhaps we'd put a short cap. But in True. this case, we're committed to therapy, so we can use 
a therapeutic device. Um, but I do think it stresses the importance that um, before you start your therapeutic procedure, in, in this case the wet has been assembled, uh, you, you need a kind of, we need a plan. Yeah. So we need to know, you, you have a histological diagnosis confirmed by pathologists, so you know that you're, you're ready to go to do therapy. But before you assemble the duet, you need to know what am I going to resect here. And in this case, it's just a very tongue-like extension. So the normal landmarks that are there, the squamous columnar junction and that fold that extends down, yeah. in this case, is more than enough to guide you. Yeah. Um, but if, if this would be a lesion within a Barrett segment, which would definitely lack, we would definitely mark this prior to assembling yeah. the duet kit because the the, the usually people would use a therapeutic scope for the, uh, the, the, the duet and generally therapeutic scopes in most centers have less image quality than the diagnostic scopes. More importantly, if you put those rubber bands onto it, you can, you can even see in this still image there's a lot of absorption of the, of, of the light by mm -hmm. the rubber bands. Uh, so we would, we would then delineate the lesion with a diagnostic scope, so a good quality scope, as you've done here with acetic acid staining. And in this case, you don't need to, but in a normal Barrett's, we would delineate it with small electrocoagulation marks yeah. and only then proceed yeah. with doing what we call a pre-procedural plan, just to follow that pre-procedural plan and to resect only that delineated area. Yeah.